Hello everyone, it's Lucky, and we are back, at least uh, for a limited time only. Um, <laughs> I do really enjoy recording videos when I can, um, but they do take a lot of time even to put like just a little bit of quality in them, and if I don't want to put a ton of quality, it take way too much time, uh, so you're not really going to see uh, frequent uploads, and this is just going to be like maybe a one-time thing, maybe a once-in-a-season thing, um, but basically what this video is going to do is um, show my playoff run and what happened in playoffs. Um, I won't spoil it for those of you who haven't uh, or don't know the results, although I'm assuming most people who are watching this video uh, actually do know the results already, um, but I won't spoil it if for some reason you haven't. Um, and then after I get into the videos, I'm going to go ahead and do a season recap. Um, just kind of what I thought of the team, how it went, um, that type of thing. So I'm going to leave um, timestamps in this description for those of you who would like to skip around and see certain things. Um, yeah, and with that, let's get into the first team builder and battle. And we are here with our uh, first team builder for our first playoff match against uh, T4U and his Boston Red Sox, who was actually a division mate of ours. Um, we ended up splitting in the division. Uh, actually, there were three of us that all made playoffs and all ended up with an 8-4 and four record. Um, I'm pretty sure we had the same division record and conference records as well, so it actually came down... Uh, to differential. Um, I ended up winning the division with the highest differential. Uh, Boston came in second and then Pardis came in third in our division. So um, yeah, I get to play T4U for the third time this season um, in the first playoff match. So I have not had great playoff success against him in the past. So um, yeah, that's, that's something to look forward to. Um, so you can see my team on the left is uh, Mega Scizor, Zapdos, Volcarona, Politoed, Apabulu, Kingdra, Noivern, Toxicroak, Frostlass, Kecleon, and Stunfisk. Yes, we are <laughs> drafted a rain team. Of course, it's me. What else do you expect? Um, and Boston's team is the Charizard X, Tapu Fini, Melmetal, Mihalego, Scolipede, Serena, Arachnorid, uh, Galarian Moltres, Sandaconda, Wigglytuff, Rotom. Um, like I said, we split the first thing, so, uh, first game, I had Pelipper, ugh, and, uh, got low pretty easily and wasn't able to set rain up a lot, plus he brought the Sandaconda, um, which we talked after and he drafted specifically for this, for my rain, so I could definitely see that coming, um, against me, and then second game, I ended up actually pulling off um, sweep with um, Kingdra, which I think was the only time it actually, <laughs> this season actually did something in weather, so uh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, so he didn't bring the Tabu Fini that game, so I'm pretty sure he's going to bring it this game. Um, what I expect he might bring, um, I think he's bringing the Nihilego. I do not have Great switch ins to that. Um, my best is just pure special defense in general. I don't really have anything that I can, you know, actually resist the hits because my steel type in uh, Mega Scissor is only neutral to rock. Um, so that's a big issue. I think he'll bring the Tapu Fini this time um, to deal with my rain because it does kind of stop Kingdra. Um, I mean, there are stuff I could do, but I expect the setup variant. Um, the Charizard X could be scary. Um, I actually expect the special defensive set, though, or at least I'm prepared for it, because that's what he brought in Game 2 against me, and it actually gave me a decent amount of problems. Um, yeah, other than that, I guess I could see him bringing the Scolipede, um, 
the Serena is good against Rain and to Rapid Spin Away. Arachno, Arach, ugh, why can't I say it right now? Arachno, with, eh, whatever, the water bug thing. I don't know why I'm struggling with that so much. Yeah. Um, that I could see him bringing uh, because either he could bring water absorb to try to deal with my rain or he just brings the water bubble and if I set the rain then that's a powerful water attack. Um, so that's something I have to be aware of. Also the webs, um, those could be annoying. So I have to be aware of that and make sure I have something to uh, defog those, those webs away if they get up. Um, yeah, I don't really expect the Wigglytuff or the Rotom. I don't think he's going to bring either of his Tier 5s. Anaconda could come, although now that he... Um, now that I saw it Game 1, he, I'm a little more prepared, and he might not bring it. Um, so we'll see. Um, so the team I'm going to bring is I brought a... Mostly especially defensive Mega Scizor with uh, 48 attack EVs. That'll happen a while ago, so I can't quite remember what they were for. Um, I'm sure they were to pick up crucial damage on something. Maybe the Nihiligo, it guarantees a Okoa Adamant. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, the rest is especially defensive just to try to be as bulky as possible. He's pretty, pretty defensively bulky on the defensive side, so EVing special defense lets it take uh, hits better. Um, got the roost for longevity and the defog there. Um, of pivoting. This is my defogger if he gets um, rocks up and I want to get rid of those, or more importantly, if he gets the webs up and I want to get rid of those. Um, yeah, so that's my scissor set. Next we got Toxicroak, which is actually running a choice scarf this week. Um, max speed, so it speed ties the um, Abufini max attack to do the most damage. Um, knockoff, Poison Jab, Drain Punch, Earthquake pretty much hits most things. Um, so I, hopefully I can use it as my late green cleaner to kind of come in, uh, clean the game up, hopefully get a Surprise kills if he if he doesn't realize it's Scarf, because I'm pretty sure I've run it either Life Orb or, or Bulk up the whole season. I don't think I've run Scarf yet, so um, could be a could be a fun surprise set. Uh, then we got Politoed, especially defensive with the uh, Scald, Whirlpool, Parish, Song, and Protect, so we are going for the Parish Trap. Um, this is for either the Charizard X, if it's especially defensive. I don't really have a lot that could take it out on my team, actually. Um... And the things that hit it super effectively are, are, are special. Um, and then, so I could hopefully deal with that with the Whirlpool and Paris Song or uh, the Tapu Fini if it starts setting up and I just need to get rid of it. I can go ahead and Whirlpool if it's in or um, if not, I could just, or I could switch out. If not, I could just Paris Song and especially at the end if it's like the last, because he likes to leave it for last so you can't roll run it out and if that's the case i could just click Paris song and uh, as long as i have two pokemon left um hopefully that's that's a win um and then i know most people usually run rest but i didn't necessarily want Balito to just be dead weight i want it to be able to do damage if possible um so that's why i'm going ahead and running the scald as well um so zapdos this time is an offensive set um Max speed for the Charizard X. Like, what's it for? It's the Charizard X. Um, so if it hasn't set up, I can uh, at least hopefully speed tie it. Um, and yeah, we're going to run the Discharge Hurricane Weather Ball because uh, in rain that could do a lot of damage. Uh, and the Weather Ball is with, the, with the Charity Berry is so I can hopefully take out the... Um, Nihilego if I need to, so I could survive a hit and hopefully do big damage on it. Uh, the reason I'm running Discharge over Thunderbolt, or even Thunder, Thunder because, especially with the leftovers on Politoed, I don't expect Rain to be up a lot of the game, although hopefully it is because um, Hurricane obviously is 100% hit then. Um, but the reason I'm running Discharge over... Um, 
Thunderbolt is so that nothing on his team can really switch in really to the Zapdos then like I mean Charizard doesn't really want to take a Hurricane um if it's not Mega Evolve doesn't want to take an electric move either um Feeny obviously have got doesn't want to take an electric move Melmetal could probably take one I don't know about two Nihilego is the big one where if I just had um, it's pretty especially defensive, so if I just had a regular Thunderbolt, it, it could switch in fairly freely and then just get a free attack off, but once I reveal the Discharge, I think he'd be less likely to switch it in in case of the Paralysis chance. So that's really the main reason for the Discharge over the Thunderbolt there. And then Roost just for longevity. Um, then we got Kecleon, which is my uh, especially defensive, and it's my Nehalego check. Um, normally, I like running a um, assault vest on it, but I really wanted the stealth rock this week, so um, it's running especially defensive with rocks. Um, Rain punch, stealth rock, thunder punch, and sucker punch. Um, I think it's actually pretty good against this team, other than Scolipede. I have the sucker punch for. Um, and Arachnowit, Thunder Punch, um, Ultras, Galar, Thunder Punch, and then uh, Rotom, I could Sucker Punch it. Um, yeah, that's that set. And then I just have my Choice Scarf Noivern just to either clean up at the end or, you know, if Charizard X sets up one Dragon Dance, I could still come in and kill it with um Draco. Uh so that's the team. We're gonna see how the match goes. So getting into the match, we can see he brought the Serena, Nehalego, Charizard, the um, Capufini, the Moltres Galar, and the Arachnoid. God, why can I not say that? For some reason. Um so, leads here, I think I'm just going to go ahead and lead my Kecleon and try to get rocks up. Uh, hopefully he doesn't go for webs. If he does, if he does lead the Arachnoid, I can... I can, that's frustrating me. Um, I can Thunder Punch it, should do a decent amount of damage. Um, so we'll see what he goes ahead and leads. I lead the Kecleon, and he goes ahead and leads the Glarian Moltres here. Um, I think maybe you can set up an agility, um, but I have the Thunder Punch for that, and I'm pretty specially defensive. Um, I just want to get my rocks up to try to uh, damage him, so that's what I do, as that does a ton of damage, and I set up the rocks um, as I recover with leftovers, and I go to the Calc, and I'm like, okay, that is that is definitely Specs. Um, he's got to click the Dark move again. I can go ahead and switch into my Toxicroak, which I go ahead and do uh, as he clicks the Dark move again. And that crits. So maybe I should have calc and see how much it does. Um, here, I don't know if I expect him to switch out. or um, But I'm just going for the drain punch, trying to get back health. I think he expected that he could kill me, maybe, um, because of being faster. Um, but since I'm Scarf, I'm faster. As he goes for the Fiery Wrath again, and that does a ton of damage. Again, maybe I should have calced. Um, I think that may have been a max damage roll. But obviously, this Galarian Moltres is a problem. Uh, man, starting with Specs just blows me away. I'm on the back foot here. Um, I'm like, oh shit, well, Toxicroak could be useful later in the game, so I gotta save it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go into my Politoed to take a hit and then maybe go to my Zapdos or something else. So I go to the Politoed, as it's especially defensive, takes a hit. That's a three hit KO. Um, here, I'm just going to, I need Politoed later, so I'm just going to go ahead and switch into my Kecleon. As he luckily switches out, and I guess, scared of the water boosted rain move doing a ton of damage to Moltres. Um, I'm surprised he didn't just keep attacking. That, that definitely, um, got momentum back on my side. Here, I'm pretty sure he's just gonna rapid spin. Um, so I think I clicked the Drain Punch to try to get health back. Um, yeah, that's what I do. 
Did I actually gain more health back? I don't think so. Um, but here I'm going to switch out. I think he's going to go for something. Um, but Scizor can go ahead and take anything. Power Whip doesn't do anything here. I'm just going to U-turn out. Um, as he U-turns out first. Uh, and I do a pretty big chunk on the Arachnid grid to, uh, yeah. As the rain ends, unfortunately, which is unfortunate because I could have gone for Hurricane otherwise, but instead I'm just going to go ahead and click the Discharge, make sure he does not get uh, webs up for free. As he actually goes for the Toxic and misses. Uh, that's somewhat unfortunate for him now. I am an offensive set, not really a stally set, so might not end up mattering in the long run. Um, he had protect, so that would have been another round of damage. Um, but here, I'm just going to go ahead and get the, the kill. So um, go ahead and killed it. That would have been up, and then I would have taken Toxic. So had he hit, I think I would have been up to like 70%-ish on my Zapdos now. Um, as he goes into the Nihil, I go, I cannot stay in. I go to my Kecleon, which is kind of my check for that. Uh, as the Power Gem doesn't do a whole lot here, I think I make a misplay in getting my, trying to get my rocks back up. I should have just tried to recover more health because I knew the Serena was going to come and just try to spin these away right away. So we'll do the same dance as before where I switch out, go to my Mega Scissor as he spins, and then just go ahead and click the U-turn as he also clicks the U-turn to try to uh, gain momentum, but I'm slower, so I get the momentum off as he switches into the Charizard. And uh, seeing this Charizard in, I'm like, well, this is the time. I don't want him to set up. I need to kill this thing. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and Whirlpool it, keep it in. Uh, as he Mega Evolves, clicks will o and he is the special defensive set. So... That's good. Now that I made sure I hit the Whirlpool, this Charizard's dead. Um, well, probably. Um, depending on what damage he did, but yeah. So, uh, now he's dead, as long as my Politoke can survive. Now, um, the unfortunate thing is I am burned, so I don't get any leftovers recovery. Um, and I don't have rest. Um, but yeah, here I'm just going to protect... Do another turn. Um, here, I'm going to go ahead and stall this time. Just get some damage on him. He gets me pretty low. Um, but I And then the Whirlpool's going to finish it off. Because the rain ends. But I am still good enough at the end for um, another round of rain. Um, so here he goes to the Neha Lego. And I'm just like, I got to switch out. I gotta save my rain uh, as he d takes a uh, does decent amount of chunk to the Kecleon. Um, and I think that's a high roll on it. So um, I expect to die here. What I should have done is go to the Sucker Punch, try to try to get some damage on this. Instead, I just click the Drain Punch. Um, I see actually gets a low roll this time. Um, so I end up getting damage off from the Hilego, which after the game, I found out that's a big thing because this Hilego was actually um, sashed and not um, Scarf as I thought it may have been. Um, and so that damage is crucial. Um, like I said, I should have just gone for Sucker Punch and then I would have gotten that damage in general. Um, but the low roll definitely helped me out. Although... It may not matter overall because, um, as you can see, after he kills the Kefgan, which I thought he would do last time, then I go into the Scizor um, to go ahead and finish it off with a Bullet Punch. Um, even had he survived on like one health and killed the Scizor, then I just go into my Scarf Toxicroak and um, nothing's taking two hits from it. Like, yeah, the... Um, I either kill the Nehel Lego and then we're in the similar similar situation because I don't have my Scizor. Or um, Serena can't take two. I don't even know if I could take one at this point. Tapu Fini definitely can't take two and Moltres can't take two. 
Um, so we're kind of at a similar spot at this point, even had it survive. Uh, so he goes with the Moltres here. I'm just going to go ahead and stack my Politoed because I don't need it anymore except for anything besides rain. And I'm basically just setting it for Zapdos right now um, because Zapdos can now come in and click um, Discharge on the Moltres. I guess he could have switched around and tried to uh, get the rain out, but like no matter what um like like he could switch out here but still doing decent now. he could have switched into i guess this on the discharge but then i would have just clicked hurricane anyways and i guess he could have stalled the rain but whatever um click that and now all that's left is tapu fini against zapdos which i know i hit super effectively and i'm offensive uh as i click the discharge and it's the berry and i'm like oh no Hopefully this can still do enough damage because it calmed mine. I'm like, uh, that's not good. Uh, so I click the discharge again. As they go for a second calm mine. And I'm just praying that this does enough. As it does. Now, I guess even if it didn't, I would have gotten it a range uh, of Toxicroak. So uh, good game to T for you. We are moving on to the semis. Um, a little bit of hacks, but... You know, it is what it is. You can't... I, I think I played that pretty well. Um, took advantage of a couple misplays. So, hex kind of sucks. Um, but overall, I think I played that game well. And I, I think I played well enough to win regardless. So, um, good game. And we are moving on to the semis against Pardis. So, um, we will be showing you guys that team builder and battle coming up next. And we are into our semi-final battle against uh, Artis and his Lafayette Lavertars, who um, at this point, as you can see, we're both 9-4 and because we both won. And he had a pretty dominant win uh, against Shane in the first round of playoffs, sweeping him with his Mega Garchomp. So that's something I definitely have to worry about um, going forward. Um, we split the season matchup, although... Um, when I played in week two, which I ended up winning because of uh, woke up Toxicroak, um, when we ended up playing in week two, um, that one I won. And then when we played again in week 11, I think playoffs were clinched for both, or at least for me. And I knew that I might play them in playoffs, so I didn't really want to revo reveal a whole lot. So I kind of just ran a meme team and ran um, first items on everything. Uh, so... Yeah, that one, I guess I'm 1-0 in the season uh, against him. Uh, second game didn't really matter for me. I think it mattered more for him. Uh, but as you can see, you guys know my team from last time. His team is uh, Mega Garchomp, the Blacephalon, the Rotom Wash, uh, Scizor, uh, Leggy Boy, Galarian Zapdos, Hatterene, uh, Shaman, Snorlax, Sneasel, Weezing, Lapras. Thank God I don't have anything I'm struggling to pronounce in this game. Um, yeah, things I'm worried about, um, well, Cephalon does a ton of damage, although I didn't have the Politoed last time, uh, or at least for the first time we played, um, and I actually wanted to, so, and, like, wasn't memeing, um, so that should be good, because I can take any hit from the Blacephalon, um, and the rain is super helpful, um, yeah. Um, Lapras is somewhat of a threat because um, the Water Absorb can, can take care of the Kingdra, and it's pretty specially defensive, so even like Hurricane's not, do or Draco isn't doing much, and then I can't even flip turn on it, um, so that's annoying. Um, Measle is faster than most of my team besides the Noivern, and it can Ice Shard that. Um, Snorlax. He's brought Snorlax both times. Snorlax is worrisome because I have a lot of special attackers. Um, it's pretty specially bulky. Um, also, I'm obviously worried about setup like he did last time. Um, yeah, and um, so Snorlax is not a fan of that. Um, Rotom Wash is his other check terrain, so I think that could potentially come. And then Garchomp, I'm worried about, obviously, him setting up, especially I don't want what happened uh, 
to Shane happen where he gets a sword stance up and a um, scale shot and then just wins. Um, we do have a, a counter for that though. Um, it may be a one for one, but I do have my, um, I'll just get to that set first. I do have my choice band um, Frost last with enough speed to outspeed the Blacephalon, I believe. Yes, um, it's running Ice Shard, Triple Axle, uh, Poltergeist, and Spikes. Spikes is just, if I force a switch, I can go ahead and get Spikes up because they'd be helpful. Uh, Ice Shard, obviously, if the Garchomp gets out of hand, especially if it's sped up. Um, Triple Axle, if I have to kill the Garchomp from full and it hasn't scale shotted yet. Also, it's just good um, damage across the entire team. And then uh, Poltergeist is there for everything except for the Snorlax. It hits pretty hard. I don't know if he has a dark type. The Sneasel, but Sneasel is not really much of a switch into anything. Um, so, yeah, the Snorlax could be annoying to this, especially if it's thick fat. Um, Triple Axle is not doing much, but hopefully that could do a decent amount of work. Um, Charizard, or not Charizard, ugh. Scissor, Mega Scissor, especially defensive set again. Um, although this time, um, he doesn't have a ton that likes to take Bullet Punch if I set up. Um, so it's it's a setup, bulky setup set this this week. Hopefully he get in on something and just start setting up Sword Dances. Um, maybe on the Lapras, um, although Scald could be worrisome, but that's the, the Scizor set. Um, Kingdra, tip, your typical Swift Swim um, user. So I think the speed is to outspeed Garf Blacephalon, maybe, in the rain. I'm not entirely sure. It was for, again, most of these battles were a long time ago. It's to outspeed something. <laughs> Um, Zapdos this week, I have to run, uh, a defensive set, um, so with that being the case, I ended up Boots, Discharge Hurricane, pretty typical set with Defog and Roast, um, should be able to take most on the team, mostly it's there for the, uh, Galarian Zapdos, uh, or the Scizor, um, Galarian Zapdos can't really do much to it at all, um, so, and I have the static there, so, that's the Zapdos set, Politoed, um, uh, Again, basically just there to set the rain. Uh, Scald, Rest, Toxic, Perish Song. So, um, Scald for damage, uh, Toxic to hit. What Scald doesn't, maybe it can go ahead and hit the uh, Lapras or the Rotom Wash if I need to. Rest just for longevity. Um, Perish Song, if just I'm left and I'm like, if he has one mon left, then it'd be a good, good idea to uh, do that. Oh, actually... It's for the Snorlax to try to, if the Snorlax gets uh, set up, to try to make sure it has to um, switch out at some point, and um, rather than, you know, set up and stay alive. So that's what the pair song's for. And then my favorite set of the week is my Tapu Bulu uh, with Assault Vest. So the speed is to outspeed. What is it to outspeed? I don't actually know, because I don't think it outspeeds a Minspeen Rotom. Maybe it was... Oh, maybe it was Max Speed Weezing? I don't remember. Um, but anyways, rather than... And I ran the Jolly Nature, so... Oh, maybe it is a Minspeed. I think it is a Minspeed Rotom to outspeed with a Jolly Nature. Um, and that way I could put a lot more like, yeah, it's not quite as strong as if I run, ran adamant. Um, but this way with the assault vest and the, the HP and with the grass, I could even, uh, stay in on like a Blacephalon, um, in the rain with the assault vest, take whatever fire move he throws at me thinking he could kill me. And then I just kill back with darkest lariat, um, which is also there in case the Snorlax starts setting up curses and he thinks, oh, I'm just set up. I can get a bunch of like no one's gonna able to damage me while i have the dark lariat uh close combat there in case he doesn't set up zen headbutt there specifically for the reason and then uh horn leech is there just as good good grass move so um that's the team with that we will get into the battle 
and we are back with the battle uh, versus Pardis. Um, as you can see, he brings the Hatterene, which I was kind of surprised by, uh, the Garchomp, the Bicephalon, the Rotom Wash, the Sneasel, the Weezing, and most importantly, he does not bring the um, Lapras. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, wow, Kingdra is really good in this match if I can get rid of the Rotom Wash, or at least get it low, because... Um, even a Rotom Wash in rain, I don't think really wants to take two Hydro Pumps from Kingdra in the rain. So, yeah, I'm just hoping I could whittle things down and Kingdra is the plan to start. Um, not entirely sure um, what I expected him to lead. I end up leading with Tapu Bulu. I guess I thought maybe he would lead with the Rotom Wash to try to... I think that was my thing, is he would try to predict the, the Politoed lead um, and lead with his own Rotom Wash to try to get momentum to start, because um, that's something I would do. I like starting with momentum. Um, that's really his only way of getting momentum. Um, as he actually leads with the Sneeze, and I'm like, well, this is not a great case. It's going to kill the Bulu with uh, Triple Axle or Icicle Crash. I need to get out of here. Luckily, I have a perfect switch into that in Mega Scizor. So I go to that as he reveals the Icicle Crash that does nothing. I'm just clicking U-turn here. This is a this is a free U-turn. Nothing. I mean, if he stays in, it's gonna kill the Sneasel. Um, and if he switches out, tries to save the Sneasel, then I get switch initiative on anything else. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and and I know the Sneasel cannot touch me with anything. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click the U-turn. As I actually go first, and I see he's sashed, and both from the first battle we played, or the second battle, sorry, he revealed this counter, and also, like, once you see the stash, and that he's going after, um, Mega Charizard, I know the counter's coming, um, which I don't necessarily agree with that play, um, seeing that I had a Frostless that's immune to it, which is what I go into here to take the counter, and which nothing happens, um, because seeing as I had a Frostless that's mean to it. There was zero reason I was go way I was going for bullet punch there. Like, um, U-turn kills, so U-turn's free because sure he gets a switch initiative um, if I kill, but either I get him on or I get initiative if he switches out. So um, that's the case. He I don't I don't know if he thought that um, I wouldn't switch into the frost last being scared of the dark move or that he figured he could just kill me afterwards um but i'm banded and i go ahead and go for the uh ice shard to clean up this sneasel um yeah so here he goes into the blacephalon um i predict either the fire move or the ghost move either way polytoad comes in does not take anything from this um blacephalon so here, I actually double out, and I predict that he's going to go into the Rotom Wash. Um, so I'm going to go into the Bulu to try to gain uh, initiative here, as that's exactly what he does. Um, and here, I do not think he's going to stay in, both because we know um, Bulu could kill it. Otherwise, I mean, I guess he could go for a Will-O-Wisp, um, but also he has a really good switch into Weezing, uh, normally, except for I'm going to predict that and go ahead and go for the Zen Headbutt as he does end up switching out and um, I click the Zen Headbutt and that is a two hit KO. Um, so he's Rocky Helmet. Here I'm not over predicting. I'm just going to cl click what's in front of me and kill the, the Weezing hopefully if he switches out well. Um, nothing really wants to take a Zen Headbutt except for maybe the Hatterene, um, but then I could just follow up with uh, grass move next turn. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to try to kill this Weezing. As I do end up killing the Weezing. So I'm getting my predictions pretty right here so far in this game. Um, and this is on the cool. I actually didn't realize that um, with the uh, neutralizing gas that I get a complete reset of my grassy terrain when it's um, dead, which will be important later. Um... So here he goes out into his Blacephalon, knowing that I have the Assault Vest and it's raining. I know I can take anything he has 
at me and I just want to kill this Bocephalon. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click the Darkest Lariat. Uh, as he switches into his Rotom. And now here, I'm just trying to go for damage on this Rotom. Like, sure, he could Willow with me, maybe. Um, Volt Switch out, but he doesn't really have anything that wants to take a Horn Leech. Um, and yeah, I'm looking really good with, with Kingdra at the moment um, to finish the game off. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hit what's in front of me, get the Horn Leech here. As he tricks um, and gives me the specs, which... Uh, well, that's not doing anything, but uh, I am back to full health now, and, I mean, only to just when I'm cooking. Would I prefer the Darkest Lariat? Yes. Um, but, um, yeah. So, I don't have the Salt Vest anymore. Rain is still up, though. So, and I calc, and I'm pretty sure I could take a Fire Blast from this. Um, he reveals the Mind Blow, and I'm like, eh, but I don't. I think I would have lived no matter what because of my HP investment, and I'm just going to go quick Corn Leech and recover, kill it, and recover some health back. Um, getting to a decent amount of health. Um, here, I'm just going to um, try to damage the Hatterene. I don't think it really has anything that could kill me, um, as nope, that Psy Shock does not do enough. Now my uh, I've got one turn of grassy terrain left. Oh no, it's gone now. So I'm just going to click Horn Leech, try to recover health as I do. And now my thing with this Garchomp is the only way this Garchomp wins is if he sets up a Swords Dance. Um, he can't go for the Dragon move unless I switch out. Um, so he's got to try to set up a Swords Dance and try to make something happen. But I have the Frost last here. So I really just need damage and I'm going to win. And as you can see, he does go for the sword stance. As I go for the horn leech, um, get a decent amount of health. As he goes for stone edge, misses. Unfortunate miss, did not matter. At this point, I got the damage I needed. Um, uh, as you can see, it does do a lot of damage. So stone edge maybe would have killed, but then I just go into frost left and clean up the game. So um, I guess it would have been a five bone instead of six zero, but. Good game to Partis, and we are going to the championship. I was so excited when uh, I won this game, and I mean, I think it helped that it was, in my opinion, one of the best games I played. It was, uh, I propped well, it was pretty dominant. I got a couple of the reads right, right away. Um, like, obviously, the, the counterplay, I think, at the very beginning helped me, um, gave me a lot of momentum. Sneasel not killing anything and then getting the kill with uh, Frostlass. And then Boo just cleaned up. And I think the the double into uh, the Boo on the um, Wacephalon predicting his Rotom switch and then knocking out the Weezing with that predict really, really helped me um, end that game. So uh, good game to Partis. We are going to the finals and... Uh, You'll see the next thing, we will be playing our, our good friend Nolan um, in the finals, So who had an undefeated regular season, and um, we're going to try to keep him from getting undefeated on the whole season. Um, so we will see you guys in the finals and see how that goes. And it is time for the team builder of the finals. And holy shit, look at that difference. <laughs> record that we're playing and differential 14 and 0 plus 53 and actually playoff games are fairly close for him so before the playoffs that was 12 and 0 plus 47 i believe Ugh, that's that's a scary team that we're playing mostly led off by his megalopony who i think went 31 and once <laughs> this season uh yeah his his megalopony basically did a lot of work and so I have to be prepared for that as it's, it's his main way of getting kills. Um, I was in Megalopony Serum, did a bunch of work for him. Um, but those are basically what had gotten most of the kills. Now he does have some other threatening things on his team. Um, like get chip and then Megalopony comes in and cleats things off. So I do have to be aware of that. Um, specifically, I know offensively, Rotom Heat is going to be a problem, um, like Electric and Fire Coverage, I think hits my entire team neutrally. 
Um, let's see. Um, scissor, fire hits it super effectively. Zapdos, electric is neutral. Volcarona, both are neutral. Politoed, um, electric super effective. Bulu, fire super effective. Um, Kingdra, neutral. Um, Noivern, uh, electric is neutral. Toxicroak, um, both are neutral. Frostlass, super effective. Echlion, both are neutral. And Sunfisk, uh, fire is neutral. So, yeah, I really don't have anything to take on this Rotom Heat. Um, so I definitely think it's coming. Plus, he really likes it. Um, and the Slow King, I'm worried about, um, because that's really his main answer to, um, my reign, and, and earlier in the season I had a, a hard time breaking the Slow King, um, which was a Galarian Slow King, but still, uh, Slow King can be hard to break for my team. Um, so we'll see what we can do about that. Um, as far as what he's bringing, I mean, he's pretty much brought his top five to almost every game, and I, I don't see anything different. Like, he's going to bring the Megalopony, he's going to bring the Kiram, um... Freeze Dry is really well against my team also. Although, I do have a Volcarona and a Mega Scizor, so um, those should hopefully be able to handle the Kiram. Um, Skarmory, Rotom Heat, as I've already talked about. Rotom Heat and Slow King, those two are coming. Um, and then, for the last slot, I don't think Dewblade, Zorark, or Barbaracle are coming. Um, they could, but eh. Um... Most likely it's Roseray, Donphan, or Rabombi, which I could see all of those uh, potentially coming. Rabombi for the webs to try to neutralize my um, rain a little bit, although I don't think Rabombi really has the best matchup other than that. Um, so, and Scissor, who's going to be my defogger, beats it 1v1. Um, so that may not come. Dawn fan for spin and another and a different rock setter uh, that could definitely come and then Roserade um, grass types I always expect to come so um, I ran some a little bit more unique sets this time some are pretty pretty simple like this is the top two there that doesn't scissor very simple on the EVs and then you go down lower and then and there's some fun we're having with with these sets because it's it's finals I mean you got to go all out um, yeah. So Mega Scizor, we are just running it as um, like a bulky tank, uh, at Adamant Nature, 252 attack to do as much damage as possible. Um, that's for the Kiram, the Megalopony, because uh, priority is good. The U-turn can take out the Slow King. Um, just, I wanted the, the high attack to be able to do as much damage, but I also needed it to be able to take some hits. Um, so that's what the max HP is for. Special defense, always throw them in there um, because defense with a higher stat don't really need more defense. Um, bullet punch, U-turn, roost, very typical. And then um, we'll have to run the defog on Scizor this week, both for rocks and also um, in case the uh, webs get up. I really don't want webs. Um, we already talked about Zapdos a bit. Um, as far as the EVs go, you know, that's my Megalopony check. Um, Megalopony comes in, it's, it's coming in every time um, with the Rocky Helmet. So um, we're just trying to get chip on the Megalopony. So one of my either Mega Scizor or a Toxic Croak, one of my priority users could come in and clean it up later once it hopefully is out of fake outs. Um, he does like to use fake out out of the Megalopony. So um, he clicks fake out, Zapdos comes and gets some Rocky Helmet chip, maybe a static procs. Um, yeah, Discord, Discharge, Hurricane, and uh, Weather Ball for the rain. Um, rain, I need the rain this week more of as a... I mean, I am bringing the, the King Dry. I debated maybe not bringing it, but um, it's definitely more of like a defensive defensive thing th this week than, than setting up the offensive. Because um, I'm pretty sure he's going to try to save the Slow King. Because if the Slow King goes down, um, King Dry could do a ton of damage. Um, but anyways, the weather ball is there to hopefully kill the Rotom Heat if it stays in. Um, yeah, and I need it to be 252 defense to be able to take, like, Ice Punches or Triple Axles from Megalopony. 
um, which is also why the Rocky home was there, like, it's not doing enough that if, if I come in on a fake out and then click roof the next turn, like, even, it, even uh, all three hits from uh, triple axles only doing, like, 60-something percent, um, to Zapdos, and, um, I can just roof that off enough that um megalopathy is gonna kill itself before it kills me um with the triple axle and uh, ice punch isn't a two hit ko anyways and again the rocky helmet it'll kill itself before it kills me um knock and what does he have for knockoff on his team i think just the i guess the zorark which i don't think is coming so out of things could potentially come just the dawn fan I mean, I guess it could trick away the Rocky Helmet with Rotom Heat, but I think the Rocky Helmet's going to be there to stay. Volcarone is kind of a fun set. Um, it's my attempted answer to a Rotom Heat, uh, because it is especially defensive this week um, with enough speed to outspeed a max speed Rotom Heat so I could get the Toxic off on it. Um, besides that, Fire Blast and Bug Buzz hit almost his entire team, or I think they do hit his entire team besides that Rotom Heat. Um, obviously, if the rain's up, Fire Blast isn't doing as much, but Bug Buzz actually has pretty good coverage against his team. Um, yeah, like, it doesn't hit the Lopany, but um, even in rain, I don't think he really wants to have that taking damage. Um, Starmory doesn't hit, but... Again, don't think even in rain it doesn't really want, doesn't really want to take a fire blast from Volcarona, even with no special attack investment. And he doesn't know like um, I've run Quiver Dance Volcarona almost every week. So um, and the one week I didn't, I think it got like paralyzed, so it couldn't actually do anything. <laughs> uh, so that was unfortunate. Um, but yeah, that's the Volcarona. Hopefully, be able to take the Rotom Heat down. Um, and secondarily, the Kiram um, as a special hit, although I do have Scizor, which Kiram can't really touch. Um, so that's that. Um, Politoed, Choice Scarf this week. Um, enough special attack EVs to kill the Rotom Heat, which is actually the uh, goal of this Politoed set in general, is to but to lead it, hope he leads the Rotom Heat. Um, hope I'm able to kind of uh, trick him into a false sense of security and go ahead and um, yeah, kill him off with the Weather Ball, and then I don't have to deal with that thing. Um, besides that, then we just have Focus Blast and Ice Cream for coverage, and then a Toxic for if the Slow King comes in. Um, hopefully, I can um, predict that coming in on my Weather Ball or Focus Blast, or Ice, because I can't touch it otherwise. Get a Toxic and then switch out. Um, Kingdra, very specific. I have it as, oh, I kept the Naive Nature. Whoops. <laughs> um, that was not supposed to be the case. Originally, I was going to run it. Um, yeah, that should not have been the case. Uh, originally, I was thinking about running it mixed, to try to hit the, the slow king, um, but Outrage didn't do enough damage. I guess I could have run it mostly physically offensive and then a little bit of special attack for the um, Skarmory, um, but that that was thought of after the fact. Um, yeah, that's a set. Um, very typical Rain Sweeper. And then we have a mix. Uh, Toxic Croak to try to hopefully deal with his walls. Speed is for something. I don't quite remember what my speed was for in this this set. I don't know if it was just didn't want to be out said craft or I don't know. It's for something. <laughs> I'll say that. Oh, I think it's for to outspeed a min speed Rotom Heat that's running a little bit of speed. I think in case he wanted to like throw for. I think it's outspeed for EV speed Rotom Heat in case he had ran just enough speed so that creepers don't outspeed it. I I don't know. Um, max attack, um, special attack with the, I 
think with the focus last was the two hit KO Skarmory. There was something for that. Again, I don't quite remember what these EVs were for at this point, but they did serve a purpose. Um, and then we go ahead and run the uh, 72 HP EVs to be a little bulkier. I think Naughty Nature is minus special defense, which I think I ran again where right, I ran the naive nature on the Kingdra, which I should have switched because flip turn's not there for damage. Um, but I've had to change the nature. Um, most of his attackers, well, I'm really worried about like, I don't want to take any more damage from Megalopony's fake out. Um, and I can go ahead and run a life orb on this because of the dry skin. Um, yeah. Uh, vacuum wave to hit the Megalopony and the Kiram super effectively. Um, so yeah, that's that's the team. Um, oh, one more thing. I did have to run Ma um, plus speed nature for either um, a choice scarfer. So I, I could outspeed all of the uh, choice scarfers that he could potentially run. Um, or um, I think this still... Uh, outspeeds like stuff at minus one if he had got the webs up. Um, so that's the team and we will get into the battle and see how that goes. Alright everyone, this is it. This is the finals of WPS Season 10 versus Nolan. Um, he does bring pretty much what I expect. Um, plus the Roserade, so I have to be aware of his spikes or toxic spikes on the Roserade. Um, spikes and stealth rocks on the um, Skarmory. Um, and yeah, as I talked about in the team builder, I am going to lead Politoed. Hope he leads the Rotom. Because um, either he's leading the Rotom or he's leading the Megalopony and getting off a of fake out, which if he leads the Megalopony, it's an easy switch out into Zapdos. If he leads the Rotom, I'm clicking Weather Ball. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to lead the Politoed. As he does need the Megalopony, this is going to be an easy switch into Zapdos. Try to get some damage off with a Rocky Helmet. Um, so as he does go for the Fake Out, I do do the Rocky Helmet damage, and I do get a turn one static. So, uh, unfortunate for Nolan, but, um, it is what it is, um, I am just going to go for a Hurricane here. It hits most everything besides Rotom Heat, and if he does go into the Rotom Heat, I can go ahead and click a Weather Ball. If he goes into the uh, Skarmory, basic uh, Skarmory, I can go ahead and click the, the Discharge. So uh, as he decides to go to the Slow King, um, I click the Hurricane. That does not a ton. Um, I'm just going to click the Discharge here. Is that really doesn't do a lot, um, but I do get the paralysis as he teleports out. And uh, here I'm just, I have rain up, I'm just clicking the hurricane. I don't really know what Rosary can do to, to hurt me. I guess I could set up spikes. Um, as he reveals the aromatherapy, I'm like, okay, well, uh, Slow King is not paralyzed anymore, but that might actually be a good thing because then hopefully I could toxic it. Um, although, Roserade with the, the aromatherapy is something I need to worry about, and uh, then Megalopony is no longer paralyzed, so um, maybe I could get another thing in. Here, I predict him to switch out, and uh, I'm hoping he switches into the Rotom Heat, because I'm just going to click uh, Weather Ball, try to get some damage off. I don't think he's going to stay in. Uh, so he actually goes to the Slow King, um, and that does pitiful damage, so... Had I gone and done Hurricane into Discharge, uh, he would have had to switch out because that would have killed um, as I get another Paralysis and he is able to recover off. Um, I'm just going to keep clicking Discharge until hopefully he gets fully paralyzed, which he does here. I know he has to switch out, um, but I'm just clicking Discharge here um, as the Rotom is in, which is scary. Here I'm just going to go into my Volcarona hoping that it could take the hits it needs to. Man, I wish I could have afforded rocks on this. Maybe I should have not brought the King John brought something like Kecleon instead or Stunfisk. I did not have the best rockers. 
Um, as he said to the nasty thought, I'm like, shit, this is scary. Um, I can't really touch this, though, besides getting the toxic off. I'm, all I'm saying is don't miss, don't miss, don't miss. As I do get the toxic off, as that does not do a lot, uh, but I do get fully paired. And I'm like, e or not fully paired, I do get paralysis. And I'm like, um, I guess it's only fair I had done a couple. Now I'm going to try to roost off the damage. Um, process is unfortunate, otherwise I would have been able to beat this 1v1 um, because I would be able to have roost up to full first um, before the damage. Um, as it is, he's going to go ahead and cook the overheat and kill me here. So Volcaron is down, which was my biggest check to the Rotom, but um, it's toxic. So that's good. I just got to hope that he can't get an aromatherapy off now. Um, as I go into Politoed, and I don't know if he, I mean, this is Screaming Scarf or just getting Rain up to try to uh, mitigate the fire weakness of like Scissor or something, but Scissor can't really touch Rotom, so I guess maybe, I don't know, he might predict I'm Scarf. Either way, I'm just clicking the Weather Ball, I'm like, I gotta kill this Rotom. As he switches into the Roserade, um, as Weather Ball does enough that I know this is a two hit KO and um, yeah, now he almost certainly knows I'm Scarf, uh, or at least Speedy. Um, so he's gonna go into the Slow King, I'm like, okay, well, this is the case, go into my Zapdos. Uh, as he does get fully paralyzed, and I'm like, well, this is a fun game I'm playing, so I'm gonna go ahead and click the uh, discharge again, hoping for a full paralysis or something as he teleports out into the Kiram. Um, I can't stay in, but I have a good switch in in Scizor. So I am going to go into my Scizor, uh, take the freeze dry. Here I'm going to click U turn. Um, I do predict him to go into Skarmory, which may be Rocky Helmet, but at this point I needed to stay in to get my Mega off um, so I get that extra added bulk. Um, so, as I do U-turn, do some damage, he is Rocky Helmet, but now his 30 is broken, so I'm going to go into Zapdos, and I think I just click a... No, I double, I double, so I predicted him to go to the Rotom Heat here, um, to try to get Switch Initiative and have my um, Politoed in on his Rotom Heat, which could hopefully kill. Is that's exactly what happens. Now I pressure him with a weather ball um, that he probably believes to be Scarf, um, but I predict him to go into Slow King here and make a triple switch, uh, as that's exactly what he does. And so I'm going to then go ahead and click the Discharge, again hoping for Paralysis um, as he teleports out. And we're going to do the same thing with Kiram um, into the... Uh, I'm going to switch out, go to Scizor, because Kiram can't touch my Scizor, um, as he just goes for the freeze dry. And as long as it doesn't freeze, then I'm going to go ahead and roost up um, to get to pretty close to full health. Uh, as he goes into the Skarmory, here I'm just going to switch into the Zapdos, because um, it'll pressure the Skarmory out. Maybe he predicts that. Um, but he actually goes for Roar here. Um, and gets me into a scissor. So we're just going to do the same song and dance and go back to Mrs. Aptos. If he wants to roar, so be it. As he actually goes for the drill pack, um, does some damage, and here I get a free discharge off. Um, so here, I know he's toxic. I'm just going to roost up, try to get the full house, maybe see what he wants to do. Uh, as he pain splits, um, get some health pack, and I roost up to full. Um, so here I predict that he sees that I'm going to try to maybe stall him out. Um, so because of that, I make a kind of bold read here, and I predict him to go for the nasty plot. As I switch out into my Politoed to, again, try to get that, um, force this Rotom Heat out or to die to my Weather Ball. As that is what he does, uh, he can't stay in thinking that I'm Scarf here or knowing that I'm Scarf. Um, so I'm just gonna, I think I just fire off a Weather Ball. Yeah. Just in case, I can't over predict. Um, so yeah, here the Slow King's in, I go to Zapdos. 
he gets fully paralyzed. I don't know what he was going for there. Maybe the, the slack off. Uh, I think he's got to switch out here. Yeah. So I just go ahead and, as I've been doing, I just go ahead and click discharge. And I take out the Skarmory. That is huge. Now I can freely U-turn on his um, entire team with Mega Scizor. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a pretty pretty big deal there. Um, that the Skarmory is down. Um, I'm surprised he didn't switch into Rotom again, or, I don't know, something else. Um, but here we are, Zapdos picks up the kill at full health. He goes into Kiram. We're going to do the same thing we've done in the past, which is uh, Zapdos out into Mega Scizor, take the hit. We're going to U-turn out to get momentum. See what he goes into as he goes into Mega Lopany. Um, and I think I go into the Zapdos because uh, that's what's supposed to take it uh, as that's exactly what happens so here I roost thinking he's going to go for um, a fake out or I don't know what um, no what I thought or if he just went for the ice punch I didn't think he was going for a fake out I thought maybe he'd go for the ice move um, which turns out talking after the game he did not have he needed to have the fire punch for mega scissor um, so yeah, I don't, and he U-turned out. It sucks that the paralysis rocked, although I don't necessarily agree with the U-turn play in general, um, just because he knows I'm Rocky Helmet. He knows that the um, Zapdos static could proc, and he also knows that Zapdos is my switch into Megalopony anyway, so I'm not going to switch out. So um, I don't know what he if he thought he'd get momentum. Not entirely sure why he switched out. Um, but I do get the paralysis again, which which sucks that that happened twice. Um, as he goes into Rotomy here, here um, I know that even if he does go for a discharge to start, that uh, Polito could take a hit, and I'm just praying that he does not uh, get fully parried, uh, as he does not. This is a pretty ballsy play. Maybe I should have gone into. Kingdra instead, um, but I do not get fully parried, and I can just go ahead and fire off a Weather Ball again, I believe. No, no, I predict him to go into the Slow King, I guess, uh, this time. Because at this point, I definitely am playing like Scarf, and here I'm just, again, trying to get damage, uh, as he does get the Slack Off off. Uh, and again, I'm just going to click... Oh, no. I predict, yeah, I thought I just went for, this happened a little while ago, um, I thought I had just gone for the uh, discharge there, waiting for him to get parrowed, but I knew he was going to go for a um, recovery move, so I figured I could get Scizor in and then get a free U-turn to do a bunch of damage off the Slow King, um, or get momentum as he switches into the Megalopony. Um, as I go into Zapdos here, what do I do? Do I click Roost? Yeah, I think I click Roost, uh, thinking he would just try to kill himself. I don't, I guess. Maybe not the best play here. I go ahead and I go into Kingdra this time. Uh, as I'm looking at it, and I'm like, Kingdra's not, I don't really need Kingdra that much as he pain splits, get some health back. Here, I'm just going to flip turn to try to get momentum. I don't think he's staying in. I don't think he can one-shot, so knowing that he can't one-shot, I'm just going to flip turn out uh, into Toxicroak. And here, uh, what do I go for? I think I just go for the knockoff. Yeah, I go for the knockoff because it'll do a ton of damage as I kill the Megalopony. I was fine with that because I actually didn't think Slow King would have um, the Psychic move. i uh, pretty sure it was wa going to be Water move, Fire move. Um, unless he was like Assault Vest, which I already know from Teleport and Slack Off that he wasn't. So I already know those two moves. Um, and I don't think he could really afford to run Psychic. So Toxic Croak, pretty safe switch in. Um, as he kills the Megalopony. Um, don't recover any health. Either though he goes to the Rotom Heat. Um, I do the Calc, I'm pretty sure I could live from what's been going on. So I just took a Gunk Shot, take out the Rotom Heat. Thank God that thing was a pain in the ass. Um, as he goes into Kiram here, I'm just trying to get damage off because I think at this point Scizor wins. Oh no, I, I go into Scizor because he can't touch it. 
So uh, here I think I roost off. I'm like, please don't crit, please don't crit. Does not crit. Even the special defense drop wouldn't be the worst. So here I'm just gonna keep roosting up to full. As I get the full, here I click the U-turn uh, on the Slow King as he reveals to be the Bugberry. I'm not entirely sure if that was for the Mega Scissor or actually more likely probably the Volcarona so that I couldn't set up for free on him because yes, <laughs> Volcarona setting on a water type, maybe not the best, but I would be able to get to at least plus one. Um, and then, because Volcarona could have been an issue for his team. Uh, I could get at least a plus one, and then once I'm to plus one special defense, the water moves aren't doing a whole lot, unless it wasn't rain. Um, so yeah, so here I just go into the Toxic Croak as he teleports out uh, into his Kiram. Here I'm like, I'm just going to go for damage at this point. Get the Vacuum Wave reveal that as he does take out uh, the Toxic Croak. Um, so here, I think I just go for the bullet punch. Yeah, go for the bullet punch. Um, and then go for the U-turn. If he switches out, I get momentum, but he does not. And it's Kyurem versus the world now. Um, as I go in and switch into Politoed, I'm like, eh, maybe if he's not Scarf, Politoed would get the final kill, uh, assuming he hits the Focus Blast, which is always a thing. Um, but Kyurem is Scarf, so... Polytoad goes down, but we are just going to go ahead and send out the Scizor and click Bullet Punch. And with that, your Minnesota Lycan Rocks are the WPF Season 10 Champions. And I am so excited about that. Great game to Nolan. Um, Sucked that it had to be against him. He's one of my good friends in, in real life, so... I would really like for him to get a championship too, but, you know, if one of us had to get our first championship, it's going to be me. Um, the fact that the hacks happened kind of sucked, but, um, you know, it is what it is. I, I think I played well. I played to what I needed to. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just pretty excited that I was finally able to, to get over the hump and finally, finally win a championship. So, yeah. Um, yeah, with that, we will be getting into the season recap and then how I thought of the team. Also, what's really cool is, you know, me being known for the rain that I was able to bring rain uh, to, to finals and go ahead and win that. So, good game to Nolan. Sorry about some of the paralysis stuff, but I still think I made the plays I needed to to win, even with a bit of hacks. And um, as I, well... As I think I've said in like Discord before, you need a bit of luck to win a championship. Like, I don't think just winning a championship purely shows like your skills as a battler. Um, really, I think being because you you need a little bit of luck going your way. You need to like have good luck for three games in a row. Um, I think more of like what shows you being a good battler is consistently making playoffs and like Nolan making finals two of the past three seasons like I think he's in those two ones finals runs he's lost I think one regular season game <laughs> so I mean that just shows that even if he hasn't won a championship yet like he's gonna win one eventually he's gonna get over the hump and like it'll happen eventually I'm just excited like that I finally won one and kind of get that monkey off your back that oh you never won a championship but um regardless great game to everyone I played um playoffs are tough Making a championship run tough, and, and I'm glad I was able to do it. Um, but yeah, soon we'll get into the team recap and what I felt about the team. So I will see you guys in a bit. All right, guys, jumping into the season recap for a season 10, the WPF. Um, if you have not watched the battles already and just skip to this point, you have three, two, one before I spoil you. And we are the Season 10 WPF Champions. Woo! So this is my championship team consisting of Mega Scissor, Zapdos, Volcarona, Politoed, 
Apabulu, Kingdra, Noivern, Toxicroak, Frostlass, Kecleon, and Stunfist. I am so happy that my first big championship, I was in like a smaller league and won one once, but this is, I would say my first big championship, finally got over the hump, and um, yeah, we did it with a rain team, which is, is super exciting. Um, so we ended up going eight and four in the regular season. Um, we were, I think, seven and three at one point, and then I had already clinched, so I was like, whatever, last games, I'm going to meme, um, so lost one of them, and then forfeit the last one, so I didn't get to play, but um, overall good successful season, and then obviously a, a good playoff run, so um, you can see the stats there, I'll go through them a little bit um, more with everything, but also... Um, I tallied up the, the final playoff stats, so uh, in the playoffs, Mega Scizor came to all three games, did not die once, um, managed to get three kills. Zapdos, who was probably the MVP of the playoffs, um, also didn't die, uh, got five kills, most of those coming in game one, versus T4U, it got four, um, and one in the finals. Um, Volcarota came to one game and died. Um, but it did its job. It did its job toxicing the Rotom and put that thing on the timer. Um, Apubulu also came to one game only, but again, did his job, racked up racked up five kills uh, against Partis. So uh, good job, Bulu. Uh, Politoed gained to all three, uh, two and two, but you know, Politoed's never meant to be, to be a huge kill getter. Uh, Kingdra did nothing. You call it the Tony Snell. <laughs> Uh, it came and got no kills, no deaths in two games. Um, Norvern also came to one game, nothing, no stats. Uh, Toxico came to two playoff games, went two and one. Uh, Frostlass came to one, went one and zero, oh, did what it needed to in that game. Um, and then Kecleon came to one game and went zero oh and one. Although even though it didn't get a kill, it did a lot of work in the game it did come to. Um, but yeah, super excited with this 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 team. Um, the one thing looking at the team as a whole could have got a better ground type um, rock rock was an interesting type against me luckily I didn't really face too many strong rock types besides in the hill I go and that I was sort of able to deal with with the um, Sunfisk or not the Sunfisk um, the um, Sunfisk would have dealt with it but it wasn't a great match for the rest of the game the Kecleon um but yeah, I actually, and you see, I actually had points left over because originally I had Politoed and then at some, or Pelipper over Politoed, and then at some point with trades, I um, was like, when trades were done, I like delayed my battle that week, so I didn't really, um, yeah, wasn't really able to make that trade. Um, but yeah, looking at the team, you could see from games played, it's it's very, I mean, even across the board, which I haven't necessarily done a lot. Uh, usually I have like a few top heavy mods, but like the fact that everyone was between four and eight games played, I think that's that's pretty good for, for a team. Everything was useful. Everyone did its part. Um, yeah, I guess now we can talk into the, to the mods as a whole and maybe I would like them on the team. Uh, Mega Scizor, probably my favorite Mega to use. I think it's the only one I've drafted multiple times. Um, I think I've had it three times that I know of. Um, my first season ever, which I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and then actually the other one where I won a championship, I had Mega Scizor. So good job, Mega Scizor. Um, one of the best Megas in the game. I do prefer it to regular scissor. Now, I have drafted regular scissor a lot, actually. Um, I haven't necessarily drafted mega scissor a lot, but I think mega scissor is the only mega I've drafted more than once, so um, I enjoyed it. Didn't necessarily get a ton of kills, um, but it it certainly did its job. It was a very integral part of the team. Like it, It's so good that you can just, like, you can have it there as defensive. It's a great pivot. Um, it still hits hard without any investment, and then if you really need to, you could put investment um, 
into it to have it hit a lot harder. You can have it set up. I love Mega Scissor. I will draft it again. I will have take it as my Mega every time. Um, Zapdos was uh, my first round pick because going into the season, I already knew starting it that I wanted to do Zapdos Reign. Um, and I just love Zapdos as a Pokemon. It didn't actually do all that much in Rain. Um, I mean, Rain is certainly useful for it to have Hurricane, um, but I never ran Hurricane and Thunder, um, although I did run Rather Ball a couple times, but um, maybe I could have run like an agility set with uh, Thunderbolt and, or Thunder and Hurricane and Weather Ball. I probably could have used Zapdos more offensively, but overall still did pretty good. One of my favorite mons in draft. I mean, that's part of the reason I like Rain so much, um, which I have said before, I'm so glad that me as the Rain person finally, uh, the, the time I do break through and win a championship is with Rain, if I haven't said that enough. Um, but I think part of the reason that I like Rain so much is because I like a lot of the mons that just go well in Rain um, and that still go good outside of Rain. And like Mega Scissor and Zapdos is, is an excellent full turn core together and they just pivot around although again i don't know if i actually use zapdos as a pivot that many games um i think a lot of times it was either three attacks or um a defogging set so here's what it is hurricane was a big buff for it this gen um getting usable uh, flying stab i think it also get air splash but you're never running that um volcarona one of my favorite fire types you can see it got a decent amount of kills most of those coming in week one um, it had another mini sweep in some of the different weeks. So, um, Volcarona good for one or two sweeps a season. Really good on rain teams because it forces your opponent to prep for more than just the rain because you bring the rain. You prep for Volcarona, I mean, you could bring the rain and run through that. If you prep for the rain then, and you don't bring rain, then Volcarona could come and... Um, Right through that so it works really well um even if some rains up like it's got a strong non-fire stab in its bug moves and then you got hurricane on volcarona the one thing i could say i do wish i used it a bit more than just like the quiver dance set boots is a godsend but also makes me like less want to try something like oh it'll be fun like sometimes just i'm gonna run specs and just blow through another team but instead i'm like so worried about the boots and it's just there that's like you're gonna run it with boots um so i really wish i had maybe run it more defensive more because those were actually really fun sets the two times i tried it this this year but um yeah i definitely draft that again polytoad god this this season definitely shows that um i mean i prefer uh polytoad over pelipper and before i never used pelipper but i thought uh, I just thought Polito was better, and this season confirms that I, especially in draft, like maybe in uh, ladder Pelipper is better because your opponents aren't necessarily prepping for the like rain. Like you're not building a team to specifically deal with the rain, so your Pelipper comes in, it sets the rain, it you turns out, you get your sweepers, and you win. Um, in league, you can't really do that. They know that the rain is coming, so I like having Polytoad, I think is Sure, it doesn't have the U-turn. I'm saying, give it flip turn. Come on, Game Freak, give it flip turn. Um, the Polytoad is bulkier. Its typing's better. Um, you don't have to worry about rocks. Um, it's got, like, I mean, Water Absorb could be useful. It's got the, like, insert bulky water here stats. Um, it's just a generic bulky water to that. Um, even if, like, rain isn't great, it, it, it can come in and... And just be your good support bulky water which i think is one thing i was missing in the first couple games where i did have pelipper before i was able to get my hands on polytoad is um i was missing that generic bulky water um Hebu Bulu, we moved down to tier two this off season which um i do think tier two is probably where it belongs now um maybe always where it belongs well not in gen 7 but um when but I think tier two is probably where it belongs, although it is a really strong tier two. Um, again, a lot of those those stats you see that's from one game, but uh, it did have one game in the playoffs, and and before that it had one game where it had set a bulk up and just uh, won. So 
I'm I'm really becoming a fan of sub bulk up um, with either like Horn Leech or Drain Punch. It's just a really good move. I am just now noticing because I'm keeping the background up from the um, game. I'm just now noticing that I forgot to switch the the differentials for the actual game layout. So, uh, oops, that's embarrassing. Whatever. <laughs> I'm still professional. Um, as is, as you can see from this ranting, I just I just enjoy ranting. Um, but yeah, Bulu in tier two, definitely a steal. Um, wish it got better fairy coverage. Um, there are certain disadvantages like yeah, you could switch it into to dark type, and I guess that's why looking at the team now, I struggled so much. Galarian. Moltres is like, okay, my fairy is normally my dark type switch in. Well, you can you can hit you with the hurricane. Um, I don't think he even brought Baloo to that game, but uh, yeah. If it wasn't choice, then Baloo wasn't doing anything against it. So I guess that's the bad thing about the, the grass typing with a fairy and using Baloo as a fairy. Um, is that the grass type doesn't really help it out much. It's definitely more of a grass type than it is a fairy. Um, but, you know, you are looking for roll compression and, and it can take on dragons. So, that's the case. Kingdra, I actually didn't use Kingdra much as far as sleeping. Either the games, it was brought either, you know, it either got, uh, I think it got maybe one sleep. Either it got uh, other things got killed before it reached the, the field or, or something else happened. So, um, But this is actually, I think, the first season with how much I've drafted rain, surprisingly. I think this is the first season Kingdra actually ended up making it the entire season on my team. Usually I had ended up dropping it, picked it up, and then dropped it for something else. Um, yeah. Norvern, I really needed for the speed. Um, that's the main reason it was here. And actually, Noivern is one of the most drafted Pokemon because it's usually... I like the speed, and it's usually a lower tier. And, like, you can have multiple flying types and multiple dragon types. Like, they're good. It's just a good type, and it's a good budget dragon. You don't necessarily want, uh... <laughs> sorry. Too many dragon flyings on the same team, but... Um, I like Noivern. It's fast. It's deceptively bulky. You can run in a bulky set. I didn't really have to this season. Um, but yeah, I was most of it for the speed. Um, and obviously having rain with Hurricane helps. The one thing I will say, bad thing about Zapdos um, and rain, going back to that, is that, and I guess in general, is that Zapdos generally, um, like electric and flying types are two of the, the types that have the highest speed. Um, and Zapdos being at base 100 and um, not giving you that speed means you need you might need to double up on one of them, which flying is much better to double up on than electric, although I did double up on electric, as you can see later on with the Stunfisk, which I'll get to. Um, but yeah, Noivern, good Pokemon. Toxicroak, man, I was surprised Toxicroak got as many kills as it did. Um, but the weird thing about it is it was, a lot of times it was very... I mean, I guess it had a couple games where it just got a few, but it was very, uh, I think it got the majority of its kills in, like, two games. Um, it got, two, like, two sweeps, so. Um, one was just, like, wall-breaking with the Life Orb set, and then one was um, a bulk up set. But Toxic Croak, I actually, we also bumped that down to Tier 4, which is a strong Tier 4, but again, I think it's the right decision. I, I don't think it's... Um, Strong enough for tier three necessarily. I don't know even with the rain if I would have drafted it if it was in tier three, but it does have priority on both both sides of the spectrum. It has nasty plot and sword dance, so it's set up either way. The the thing holding it back is its speed. Um, bulk stats also aren't the best, but coupled with rain and and bulk up and and like sub, you you can make it to you can EV it to take some hits. Um, which speed is a little faster, but Overall, really enjoyed it, and it can really deal with um, some um, like bulkier teams. It can really break them down. Um, Frostblast was for speed and hazards. Um, Birdie was useful. I 
enjoyed Frost Last. It didn't do much. I really wish it got freeze dry. Um, unfortunately, that's the Glalie only thing, but why it doesn't, I don't know. Um, Frost Last is pretty cool. Kecleon, always draft Kecleon. I love Kecleon. One of my favorite tier fives. Not much to say about it. Protean's a broken ability. Uh, yeah, Kecleon's just cool. And then Stunfisk. Um, eh. It's typing fine, um, and actually it would have hit a lot of stuff decently. It's just, it's slow, and um, this is not the most powerful, so I didn't bring it all that much, but it did its job a lot of the times. Um, I, I drafted it because um, of grassy terrain. I didn't want a ground type that relied on Earthquake, although now a lot of, like, almost every ground type gets uh, high horsepower anyway, so I didn't really have to worry about that. Um, I probably could have traded it for, like, Rhyperior may have been good, like, after I had picked up Politoed. Um, yeah. But, um, overall, it's fine. Um, yeah, so that's the team. I, I was happy with it. Um, I think most Mons I would draft again at some point, um, besides maybe Stunfisk. Um, but even then, I would draft again, so... Um, yeah, that, that's my team. That's, that's my thoughts on the season. I'm just really happy it went the way it did. Happy it won the championship. Um, got that off my back. Now I can just go have fun, which probably means drafting all sorts of range teams all over the place. <laughs> uh, or just drafting some ones I, I had in the past. So, yeah, that's that's the recap for um, season end of WPS. Um, I will... I guess see you guys next season. Peace.